Okay, well, we're going to get right into the Word of God. This is going to be from Romans chapter 9. Romans uh, chapter 9. Hallelujah. I'm excited to preach this message. And I know that you're going to be touched and impacted by this message. And uh, that it's going to change the way you feel about who you are. Um, Now, uh, many people have asked me before, are you, do you believe in the replacement theory? Now, for those of you that don't know what that terminology is, the replacement theory is a theory where people say that everywhere where the Bible says Israel, it actually speaks about the church, and we replace the nation Israel with a church. Now, I don't believe in the replacement theory. I want to say that again. I don't believe in the replacement theory. So then you might immediately want to ask me about it. So do you believe that, that, that the Jews are a special nation? Now let me define what I believe about Israel and uh, Israel as a, as a nation. I do believe in, in Israel, as a, 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 um, the, the Israel of God. But I don't believe that we can replace the true Israel of God with the Jews. Let me say that again. We are not going to replace what God promised in Christ with a Jewish nation. Now you might say that that is an anti-Semitic uh, thing you've said, you are against the Jews, you don't want to uh, bless the Jews and, and all those type of things. I am not against any nation. I'm not against the Jew, I'm not against the Zulu, I'm not against the South African or the American or anybody. I'm here to preach the gospel of grace and explain to you the covenant that there is between um, God and Jesus Christ where you've been included as a believer. Hallelujah. Right. Let's go straight into Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. So, I don't believe in the replacement theory. We're not going to replace the church with Israel, uh, physical Israel. We're not going to replace the the true Israel of God with the Jews. Right. Romans chapter 9 verse 1. Let's see what Paul wrote here. He says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Now what is Paul saying there? What he was actually saying there is was he was saying that I wish that I was rather cursed for the sake of my kinsmen. So by that he was actually saying that the Jews are cursed. Okay, now you might say, oh, Bertie, there you go. You know, you're one of those weird guys that's against the Jews. I believe that I am for the Jew um, in a way that many people aren't. And I believe that God wants to save the Jews. Amen. So uh, just hear out, and we're going to do it this week, and we're going to preach next week and maybe another week on this and explain verses. I also want to make it open that if you've got any question or you want me to explain certain verses that you have that I maybe don't mention or you would like me to look into those verses, please write to info at dynamicministries.com and just say a question about Israel and uh, send it to us and I will then look into the scriptures and explain it from the perspective of grace. <clears throat> right. Here Paul comes, he says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. So he says his conscience is bearing witness in the Holy Spirit that he's not lying, that he'll rather be cursed from Christ than the Jews that is cursed from Christ. So what he is actually saying is that the Jewish people that was seeking justification by works was under the curse. So he didn't call them blessed. He called them cursed. Now, uh, we've been taught so many times that if we bless the Jews, then God will bless us. Now, there's nothing further from the truth than that. That is an absolute lie. Now, I don't want you to switch off the, 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 this broadcast. Please listen out. And you're going to be blessed by what you hear. You cannot be blessed by blessing a people. Uh, You cannot be blessed by saying, well, I speak well of the Jews. If God comes and God declares and say that those Jewish people that want to work up their own righteousness, according to Romans 10 verse 1, which we will still read, and calls everybody that wants to do that cursed, and then say that most of the Jewish people at that time there was under that curse. The curse of being, seeking righteousness by works. 
They are under that curse. It is not God cursing them. We don't, I don't curse the Jews. I don't curse anybody. All I'm saying is that if you want to be righteous by your works, you're under a curse. And yet Paul says, you would rather be cursed so the Jews cannot be cursed. But they are cursed. And it's not possible for him to carry the curse. It's not even possible for Jesus to carry the curse of rejecting Christ. So he calls them under a curse. Now, I also uh, noticed that there are people that believe that the Jews, all the Jews are already saved, and all the Jews shall be saved. Now, we're going to look into that and see that that is not the truth. It's very clear in the writings of Paul. Let's read verse 3. For I could wish that I myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertains the adoption and the glory and the covenants. Now, what is the adoption? They were adopted as the people to whom God would give the law. Okay, and the glory, what happened there? The glory that was, it pertained to the Jews, this glory that was on the mountain, Mount Sinai and everything. The giving of the law and the service to God and the promises. So to them were given promises. Okay, to them were given um, uh, uh, the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God. So they did service to God, to them was given the promises. Now I want to explain the giving of the promises to them. Now, prophecy was given to the Jews. So you can't say, so, so when I say to you that God gave prophecy to the Jews, or the oracles of God, the prophets and the prophetic words was given to the Jews, it did not pertain to the Jews. Because the prophetic words is all about Jesus. So the prophecy was actually for Jesus, but given to the Jew. In the same way, the promises was given to the Jews, but for the believer. Okay, now let's go to verse 5. Who are the fathers, and of whom as concerning the flesh of Christ, Cain, who is over all, God blessed forever. So he says, listen man, these guys are the fathers, from them Christ came. Amen. And Christ is over all and God blessed Christ forever. Right. Verse 6. Not as though the word of God has taken no effect. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they the children of God. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So here he clearly states, and this is Paul the Apostle under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit even bearing witness in his conscience that he is saying the Jewish people are under the curse. By saying that, he said, well, if the Jews are under the curse, that means that everything that God did in the Jews just fell flat and means nothing. But then he says, thank God that that is not true, because the children of God is not the Jewish people, but other people are the real children of God. Now, with that in mind, let me read this again. Remember, this is what Paul says. He says, listen, the Jewish people are now under the curse. They cursed with a curse. What curse are they cursed with? The curse of not believing in Christ. The curse of being separated from God. Which is the worst curse. And it's not only the Jews, but many Muslim people, many people that don't believe in Christ, live under the curse of not experiencing the abundant life that's been given to them as a free gift. Under the curse of not making use of the redemption that you've been redeemed with already. Not making use of the fact that you, you, you're being made righteous by the work of Jesus and not your own work. Okay, so here he comes, he says, I would rather be cursed than these people because I'm filled with, with, with heaviness. My kinsmen, they are under this curse. And they are all uh, who are Israelites. So he says, these Israelites are under the curse. So here he says that Israel is under the curse. Now today you can never stand up on any pulpit these days and say that Israel is under the curse. People will want to crucify you for that and say you're a heretic and a Jew hater. But we cannot go away from what the scripture clearly says. They're not blessed. They are not blessed. The same blessing that's been given to everybody has been given to them as well. But since they've rejected that blessing, they are under the curse. Who are 
Israelites to whom pertained adoption and all these things. These people to whom the promises was given. These people to whom the adoption has been given. These people to whom, the, who was at the mountain, who received the covenants, the law, all those things, they are cursed. They are under the curse. Paul says this is a big thing to him. He wished he would rather be cursed if he could exchange himself because he's not cursed. He's under the blessing because he received Christ. He received the blessing of righteousness by faith, but they're under the curse for they don't want it. Then verse 6, not, not as though the word of God has taken no effect. So here he says, listen, but don't worry. Even though most of the Israelites are under the curse, it's not as if the word of God has taken no effect. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. So now he says, listen guys, you might think the word of God took no effect because basically all of the Jews <laughs> rejected Jesus and didn't want to believe in him. But don't think the word of God has taken no effect. God's word had effect and the promises was made to Israel. But let me just give clarity about Israel. These Jewish people, they're not Israel. The Israel, all the people that come from Israel, they aren't Israelites. The true Israelites of God, let's read here, and I'm not trying to make up any doctrine. I'm just reading the verses here. That's all I'm doing. It says, not as though the word of God has taken no effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. And then a colon there, explaining, neither, or explaining, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they Children. So what is he saying here? For them not to think that the Jewish people are the children of Abraham. The children or the descendants of Abraham, the true descendants of Abraham, to whom pertains the promises, are not physical Israel, are not the Jews. Bertie, but what are you telling me here? Now the Bible says that the promise was made to Abraham and his seed. Now, who is Abraham and who is his seed? Now, that must be defined on the basis of spiritual interpretation. The Bible says the spirit gives life, but the letter kills. So we need to go and look at the spirit, at Christ, at the true meaning. And we don't have to even try and uh, uh, interpret any verses in the Old Testament. It has already been interpreted by the Apostle Paul. We just read. That, that's all we do. So let's, for that sake, go quickly to um, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16. Now, we, we, you know, we, we've been taught, uh, and this is the way I've been taught from Bible school and on television, that, that God has got a special people, the Jewish people. They are special to God, and a Gentile will just never understand what uh, the, the love that God has for a Jew. Now, I want to tell you, <laughs> that is simply a lie. The, 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 we need to know that there is no such a thing as God loves the Jew more than the Gentile. And I'm going to explain that very clear here. We've been taught that. And now, as, as Gentiles, and I even, I must be honest, I dislike saying that word so greatly because there's no more Jew or Gentile, but for I have to become fleshly to explain this. So, um, for the Gentile to... Uh, to feel good in the modern day church, he's got like to suck up to a Jew so that he can feel at least he's close to somebody who God really loves. Now that is not true. You don't have to try and love the Jews to be loved of God. You don't have to bless the Jew to be blessed of God. You have been blessed with every possible blessing that can be defined in the heavens in Christ without even knowing a Jew, without even saying anything good or bad about a Jew. We are defined in Christ, not in how we bless a nation. You don't have to send your money to Israel. I don't care if a grace preacher preach that preaches that to you. You don't have to send your money to Israel to be blessed of God. Israel and the physical Jewish nation and physical Jerusalem where it is right now does not add any blessing to you if you go there, if you bless them, 
if you speak well of them or anything, that's not going to add anything to you. We don't live from the perspective of lack or need. We live from the perspective of that everything that pertains to life and godliness has been provided by Jesus for those that believe. Hallelujah. It has been provided and it manifests in the believer without having a special uh, uh, vocabulary and blessing towards the Jewish people. Paul the Apostle would have been crucified for saying that the Jews are actually cursed. Imagine I come today and I say, you know, I wish I could rather be cursed than, than for the whole Jewish nation to be under the curse they are. My goodness, people say, no, you are, you, you're a Jew hater. No, if you love the Jew, you preach the truth to the Jew by saying to him, listen, my friend, I must be honest with you that the righteousness that you are trying to have by your works or by the flesh or by the circumcision of the flesh or making a demand on your genealogy and who you're born from and the fact that you are a Jew cannot save you it will never save you and that no flesh is justified by the works of the law. And I want to tell you the truth. You as a nation are not special to God as a nation. God is not into numbers. He calls you by name. He's into the individual. He, he loves you as a person and He calls you as a person to Him and He honors you by giving you the freedom to make use of His free gift of righteousness. Hallelujah. Right. So, let's go to Galatians there and just read that. Galatians chapter 3. I hope you are following me. What I'm saying is, the Jewish people are under a curse. They're not blessed because they're Jews. They are not cursed because they're Jews. They are cursed because most of the Jews don't want to believe in Jesus. Okay, so most of them don't believe in Jesus. I find um, a, 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 a lot of um, arrogance from a lot of Jewish people. If you go to Israel right now and you start to preach the gospel to a, to a, to a Jew there, especially the Orthodox Jews, the people with the clothes and the whatever, and he's going to call you a dog. He's just going to say you are nothing, you are, you, you are bad, you know, it, it, it's not good. Uh, to, to even he will have any dealings with you. I saw, um, even on, 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 on the internet, I saw some, some videos of the Jews just spitting towards the, um, uh, uh, the Gentiles, you know, calling them dogs, chasing them away. You know, so I don't say all of the Jews are like that, but I say that a great deal of the Jews are like that. And the same way with Muslims. A lot of Muslims has got no tolerance for Christ to a certain extent, but the moment they must believe upon Him and call upon, upon Him and renounce the, 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 the way they see, um, become righteous, they don't want to do that. They don't want to believe on Christ. They don't want to make use of Him. So the curse, this is what I'm saying, they're under a curse, not because they're Jews. Not not because they commit sins. They're under a curse because they don't want to believe in Jesus. And Paul comes and says, basically the whole Jewish nation, they like that. They don't want to believe. They are blinded. They don't want to see. They're blinded by love. They cannot receive love. It's just too much for them. Right, Galatians chapter 3. And by that I'm not saying that, that we are better than them. If I come and say, well, because I'm a Gentile, I'm of a different tribe or different type of people, group, that's why I'm better than the Jews. They just cursed because, the, the, because of these foolish, stupid Jews. Then the Bible's clear and speaks to me and says to me, don't you boast against him because if you think because of your flesh you something, you can also be grafted out or taken out. Right, Galatians uh, 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 chapter 3 and verse 16. It says now, verse, verse 16, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. So to who was the promise made? To Abraham and his seed. Does that speak of the Jewish people? Never. This is not what Paul says here. He says, He says not as to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that would make the promise of no effect. So what he says is, the promise that God has is not to, 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 to Abraham and the Jewish people, 
but to Abraham and Christ and obviously whosoever believes in Jesus. And the fact that a law came and covenants came between God and the Jewish people does not take away the fact that the promises of righteousness is a free gift, eternal life and salvation does not pertain to a nation. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's read it again. Galatians chapter uh, uh, 3 verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He says, not as to seeds as of many, but as of one and to thy seed, which is Christ. Now let's go to um, Genesis 12 and just look at what God, the, the blessing of, 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 of the Jews and blessing of Abraham and the and, and his descendants. You know, the, the fact that you're born from uh, the right blood means nothing to God. It means so little to God that God says He can raise those kind of people from stones. It means it counts no points before God. Nothing whatsoever. Um, what, what type of, of group you're from means absolutely nothing to God. The Bible says God's not the acceptor of the person. God does not acknowledge a, 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 an ethnic group at all. He has. He, he will never do that. He's acknowledged an ethnic group to bring forth and show the, a, a vessel of, 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 of dishonor. And the Jewish people was made by God and what is done in Christ a vessel of dishonor. So that the vessel of honor, the people that can believe, can, can come forth. And the Jewish people was actually taken by God to show how it looks, how the curse look, and how, um, how, how it doesn't work. That's what they've been there for. The only thing that blesses them is the fact that the prophetic words has been given to them. It's not a blessing to have the law, my friend. Not at all. When are you blessed? Since when are we blessed by having the law? You're never blessed by having the law. It's a curse to be under the law. The Bible's clear. So when they were given the curse, they weren't blessed by the law. They were, they were under the curse. And all the world could see that by the law, no man can be blessed. All the world could see. And then, by them disobeying the law, not listening, being sinners before God, He showed mercy to them in many cases, so that the Jews and us can believe on Jesus. But then they stumbled over the stumbling block. We will still look at that. Let's go to Galatians, uh, Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. When the Bible in Romans 9 talks about the vessel of dishonor, it talks about the Jew, not the Gentile. It talks about the Jew. Uh, Romans chapter 9. And you can just go and read the, uh, uh, Galatians chapter 12. Uh, Genesis chapter 12. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from, the, um, from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you. Okay, it doesn't say he will bless those. No, okay, listen to this. And curse them that curse you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Right. So here comes, comes he makes a promise. And, he, and, and the Bible says, And God preached the gospel unto Abraham, saying to him that he will bless him. Amen. So here he says to him, clearly, he says, I will bless those that bless you. I will curse those that curse you, Abraham. He doesn't say, I will bless those that bless the Jews. He never mentions the Jews or the descendants. He doesn't say, I will bless those that bless your descendants, Abraham. He never says that. He, says, he never says, I will curse those that curse your descendants. Talking about the physical descendants. He was talking about Abraham. If you can bless Abraham. Now what does the word bless mean? The word bless is the word barak. Which means to speak well. If you can speak well of Abraham. Then God will speak well of you. Now what does that imply? Who spoke well of Abraham? Paul spoke well of Abraham in Galatians chapter 4. And in many other verses, he spoke well of Abraham. What was the good thing, the blessing he spoke about Abraham? That Abraham believed God and that he was made righteous by believing God and having faith and not his works. That was blessing Abraham. So if you bless Abraham saying, well, I believe that the thing that Abraham did was good, that he's justified by faith and not works, you'll be blessed by God. 
Why will you be blessed? Because you make your demand on God in the same way that Abraham did by believing in God and believing in what he has promised. Amen. The promise was not made to the Jewish people. They was not made. And what I've done in my study, and I will study it further, is that there was many lands and many things promised if they obey God. But then do you think they obey God? They don't obey God. Those things is already long ago. There's been made a change of law. He says clearly, he says, I will make a new covenant because you could not keep the old one. I will give you not just a little land in the Middle East, I will give you the planet if you can believe on me. We will not be inherit, we will not just inherit a little piece of land. The Jewish people will not inherit a little piece of land. Who wants to give people a piece of desert in the middle of nowhere? You might say that's blasphemy, but I want to tell you uh, uh, there are more b- pretty places in the world with much more water, much more fruitful ground where nobody fights. I mean, there's no blessing there, people. It is always fighting, always uh, cursing, always death over that place. There's no blessing. I don't see the, uh, the peace of God manifesting there. I see much more peace in many countries in Africa, many countries in Europe, and all those type of things. But now we want to, be, we want to say they, they are blessed with that piece of land. Listen, man, the Bible says those that believe in God will inherit the earth. The whole earth. And not just as it is now, made new by Jesus. My goodness. Why do you want to uh, curse the Israelites with that little piece of land? Maybe I don't understand. You must say better you don't understand. But that doesn't make sense to me. Um, The Bible clearly says that God will bless those that bless Abraham. If you bless Abraham, it doesn't say his descendants. If you speak well of Abraham... If you speak well of Abraham, now I speak well of Abraham. Why do I speak well of Abraham? For Abraham believed God. And he's called the father of the faith. Hallelujah. He was the one that believed God unto, and was accounted unto him for righteousness. So who's the children born of Abraham, if you want to call it like that? Those that had righteousness reckoned to them by faith. They are the children of Abraham. So the physical, being a physical descendant of Abraham, being of Benjamin, being of all this, means nothing. Listen, listen to what Paul says. He's a Jew. He he was a Jew. He was a, a Pharisee. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. Now what does that mean? Benjamin was the greatest beloved. Okay? He was of the tribe of Benjamin. So, Here he comes and he says, listen, I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisees. When as pertaining to the law, I am blameless. Blameless. So you could not find a more pure Jew than Paul. Okay? Could not. A a more pure Israelite than Paul himself. And then he says, I want to just tell you what I think of being an Israelite. It is done. It is done. That's what he says. He says, I counted loss. I counted. In other words, count there is the, is the word of, that we get in, account, in, in accounting. It's you make a calculation and you come to an, with, with, with a certain equation and you come to an answer. So I've made my calculation about what profit it is to be an Israelite. He says, this whole thing about thinking you're an Israelite and that it can profit you is Done. Now, you know, there's much stronger words that we can use, uh, that we cannot use uh, here, you know, uh, in this broadcast. But you can think of some words. And Paul came with a very strong language and he says, I count this but loss and done for the excellency that there is or the exaltation that there is in Christ. So he was saying, being a Jew compared to Being what we are, believing in Christ, this is counted as done. It's counted as loss. It's counted as as losing out, as not beneficial at all, as done. 
Now, I want to say this, and, and, and this might sound offensive, but please hear, and I'm saying it in the context of what Paul said. There's a lot of dung messages about the Jews. A message of dung is counting the fact that you're an Israelite as a blessing. <laughs> Paul says that's dung. Now, if, if Paul... Uh, if, why did Paul not honor the Jew because of his flesh? I mean, so many people say that Jewish people are saved. Paul says, I pray that they might be saved. They are not saved. So if a Jew today dies and is not saved, what's going to happen to him? Damnation. Because he did not grab a hold of and made use of the only name by which man can be saved, which is Jesus. And now the church comes with their arrogance, and, and, and uh, not, not, not just arrogance, it's almost like an arrogance of, I'm better than other people because I am closer to the Jews. My brother, I want to tell you, the closer you are to the Jew in the sense of honoring him because of his flesh, the further you are from the true gospel of Christ. You might say, Barty, this will close doors for you in America. <laughs> I'm not preaching to have doors in a certain nation. I'm not trying to find favor with, with, with a religious system. I'm not here to offend people, but I'm just here to, to, pro to proclaim the true gospel of Christ as pertaining to salvation and what Jesus Christ has done for us. Here it clearly says in Genesis uh, chapter 12, that if you bless Abraham, now we've said if you bless the Jew, where Paul calls the Jew under the curse. My goodness. And Peter, he comes to Peter in, in, and he gives Peter this vision of this, this thing that comes down, you know, this, this sheet with all the animals. And he calls him unclean and cursed and he will never partake of that. Then God says, call no man unclean. In other words, by what, what he was saying is that everyone is now, everyone is, has received the place now where you, don't, where you are related to as in Christ. So the only curse that there can be is by saying, I don't believe in this. That's why Paul says, clearly, he says, if anybody comes and preaches any other gospel than what I preach, call him accursed. Now, what gospel did Paul preach? He preached the gospel unto the Gentiles. So even if Peter would come with his gospel unto the Jews and did not preach the gospel unto the Gentiles, he would be called accursed by the apostle Paul. And Paul clearly said to, 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 to Peter that he was to be blamed, for he honored the flesh of the Jew. But these days we've got ministries, television stations, uh, sending money to the Jews and whatever. Let me tell you something. The more money you send to physical Israel, the more they'll stay stuck in the death they are. For they believe that the wealth of the Gentiles is laid up for them. And now you come and you're sending them money and they still believe by your action you are reinforcing their unbelief and by your action it is the greatest act of anti-Semitism ever known to man. I want to tell you by honoring the flesh of a Jew you are really and I, man, it is, this is the way it is you are hating them. You're hating the Jew. Because you are honoring his flesh. Which not even God does. For honoring the flesh brings forth a manifestation of disqualification and eternal condemnation. For making a stand on the flesh. Paul clearly says, he says, listen, if you've been circumcised and you break the law, your circumcision became an uncircumcision, you're not the people of God. <laughs> My goodness, that's what he says. Paul clearly states in Romans, he says, who's a Jew but he that is circumcised in heart? So how can we call physical people Jews and saying because he's born of Abraham, he's the, they are the children of God. They are the nation of God. They're not. They are not and has never been. 
The true people of God are those that are born of God, not of, of blood or anything like that. Now, let's quickly go to um, John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. So God's promise was made to Israel. Who's Israel? Not all that are of Israel are Israelites. Not all that are born of Abraham are Israelites. So who's the Israelites? Are those that believe. They are the true Israelites. Many people say all the Jews shall be saved. Now, ne next Sunday we're going to get into that verse explaining that verse. That all the Jews shall be saved. No, it's not true. All the physical Israelites shall not be saved. We can read that in Romans chapter 9 clearly. Let me just do that. Bertie, you might say, Bertie, but it looks as if you've got something against the Jews. I've got nothing against the Jews. I love the Jews so much that I can tell him, my brother, if you stand before God by your flesh, you are under the curse. If you want to be justified by thinking you're going to be uh, uh, circumcised, your foreskin is going to be circumcised, and, and now you think because of a circumcision in the flesh that you now are going to have, uh, and, and by just being circumcised and keeping to the law, that's equivalent to the sacrifice of Christ. I'm going to tell you, my Jewish friend, that you are in error, in great error. I want to say what the, what the writer of Hebrews said to the Jewish people. He says, don't harden your hearts like in the day of the provocation when they provoked God by not accepting the gospel of grace and making your own way of righteousness by the works of the law. For the end of that is destruction. I want to say what, what, what the, the Hebrew, uh, God said to the, um, through the writer of the, the Hebrew writer. He clearly says to the Jewish people, he says to them, if by two or three witnesses under the law, people was punished with death, of how much sorer punishment will you be counted worthy of if you trample underfoot the blood of Jesus? It does not say there, listen my friend, don't worry. And this is the message that's, that's preached to Jewish people from the pulpit today. Don't worry. You don't need anything of Jesus now. There's going to be some rapture one day and then you're going to say, whoops, the Christians are gone and now we all of a sudden going to believe in Jesus for some reason. And then two people are going to preach in the day of, and the Holy Spirit is going to be taken from the world, and then those two without the Holy Spirit is going to convince the Jewish nation. Listen, if people with the Holy Spirit, if Jesus Himself could not even convince them, how will they be convinced? The best shot we can have is just preach and just hope that some of them are going to believe. And this is what it says in Romans chapter 9, and let me pre re read that. Verse 27. Elijah also cried concerning Israel. This is physical Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant, or the Greek there is the word few, a few shall be saved. Then verse 29. Uh, so, sorry, I want to just get the, um, another verse here. Verse 26. It shall come to pass that in the place where it is where it was said unto them, You are not my people, there shall there shall they be called the children of the living God. So what does that mean? That means there was a place where it was said, The Jews are the children of the living God. That was under the law. But then the law was taken away, and then God said, This is the children of God, those that believe in Christ. So how can we take the children of God which are mentioned in, in Hosea and when the prophet Elijah prophesied and said, listen, the true children of God are those that believe and replace them with Israel. That replacement theory is of the devil. Replacing the, the true Israel with a nation which was called physical Israel. The Bible clearly states there's Jerusalem of beneath and, the, beneath and then there's Jerusalem that's from above. In the same way there's an Israel that's, that's from beneath and then there's the Israel of God, the true Israel of God. Which is the believer in Christ, which is the one that has got Abraham as father as pertaining to the faith, who's got God as father. 
Amen. That's what the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 12. Clearly it says, but as many as received Jesus. Now this is John, an, the apostle John, which was a Jew, which was an Israelite. He, he was an Israelite that walked with Jesus, which was an Israelite. And he says, listen, those that are the children of God are those that received Jesus, who were not born of blood. What does that mean? That means that the Jews are not the children of God. You're not a child of God because you're born in a certain, <laughs> from a certain nation. You're not a child of God. That's what it says, clearly. I don't know why so many people are so scared to preach this. Because there's such a big thing because of what Hitler has done. Hitler came and he hated the Jews. Now if we come and preach the truth and say, listen man, the Jewish people are under the curse because they don't want to believe in Jesus and they cannot be saved because of their flesh. They can only be saved because of the flesh of Christ that died for them. If they believe upon Jesus, they can be born of God. They can be placed into the vine if they believe in Jesus. If we say that, we say we're Jewish haters. No, no, love the Jew enough to preach the gospel of God's unconditional love to him, declaring to him that he's already righteous by the working of Christ. If he can believe it, then he will receive that righteousness today. Tell him that he has been redeemed from the fact that he's a Jew. He's been redeemed. God came and redeemed us. The gospel was first preached to the Jew, then to the Gentile. Why was it first preached to the Jew and how was it preached to the Jew? It was first preached to the Jew in this sense, by them receiving the oracles of God. Now, what is an oracle of God? Now, if you've watched uh, The Matrix, you will know that, uh, um, just to explain the word oracle, um, that, I mean, Neo went to the oracle. What was this oracle? It was like a medium. Okay, and then she gave oracles, which was prophetic words. So the oracles of God are the prophetic words of God. Go and study it. That's what it means. It means prophetic utterances. So the oracles of God is the prophetic utterances of God. So the gospel was preached to the Jews by the prophetic utterances. But then they got stuck into the law, being blinded by the love of God. The love of God was so bright, it blinded them. They cannot see that. They don't want to believe in that. And by them rejecting Christ in that day, they've been created by the doing of God in giving Christ. When they rejected Jesus, they've been made the vessel of dishonor by rejecting Jesus. But the true Israel of God are those that embrace the gospel of grace. <laughs> Amen. Let's not be uh, uh, anti semitic Semitic people hating the Jews so much that we say that you'll be, you've got a special place before God in your flesh. The Bible says that no flesh shall be justified before God. Th that's it. Amen. Romans 9. Uh, let's just read a bit here. L let's explain the promise. Uh, from verse 6, not as though the word of God had no effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel, neither because they are um, the seed of Abraham are they the children, but in Isaac shall your seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. I mean, how clear do you want it? Why do you want to twist scripture? We don't have to twist. I don't, even if I just read this, it says clearly here that the Jews are not the children of God. They're not God's children. They are not born of God. They are a nation to whom the law was given. They are a nation to whom the promises was given. That's it. What benefit does the Jew have? Only this, that to them was the prophetic utterances given. And that they can benefit by seeing those utterances revealed in Christ. So this is the benefit. They could have the prophecies and then when they see the prophecy fulfilled in Christ, they could say, wow, the Messiah has come. We believe first and then preach the gospel. But then they rejected. They stumbled over the stumbling stone. But there are still a remnant few that do believe. Right. This this is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not 
the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. So who's counted for the seed of Abraham? The children of the promise. These are not the physical descendants of Abraham. I mean, I don't want to say I'm sorry. I want to thank God that Paul wrote this. Amen. For, for this is the word of promise. At this time I will come and Sarah shall have a son. Now listen, what is the word of promise? Now it says, I will come at a certain time and Sarah will have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even our father Isaac, for the children, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calls. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. And it was written, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. So what does he say? Here is the promise. What is the promise? That the elder shall serve the younger. <laughs> what is that promise? You'll be blessed. How will you be blessed? The elders will serve the younger. And what is that blessing? That I will not walk according to the law with you, but that I will have the foundation of mercy towards people. That was the promise. That promise was made to the seed. Who's the seed? Those that can believe. Because those that believe, they are born of God. Those that receive Christ, they are born of God. Amen. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. Let's read this again. I want to explain this. He comes in, in verse 9. He says, oh, the Jews are cursed. But don't worry. True Israel is not cursed. Because these Jewish people, they are not Israel. These, these Israelites, they're not Israel. The true Israel are the remnant that believes. And they are the little bit of Jews that still believe and all the Gentiles that do believe. They are the true Israel of God. We're not going to pray, replace them with physical Israel. We don't believe in replacement theory. Right. That's the first point that Paul makes. Then he goes, he says, I want to explain what I'm saying. He says, physical Israel is not Israel. He says, because the, prom, the, the, the seed is not counted for the physical lineage, it is counted for those that believe in Christ. Let's read it again. He says, Not as though the word of God has taken no effect, for they are not Israel which are of Israel, neither because they, they are the seed of Abraham are they children. Verse 8, This is they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. So who's the children of the promise? Now he explains the promise. What was the promise? God made a promise to the people. God made a promise to Rebekah before her children was born. What was the promise? That the elder will serve the younger. What was the promise? Listen, let me tell you, before one can do good or one can do bad, this is the promise that people will be blessed by the election of God. That people will be blessed by God's doing and God's choice. So who are the blessed? God chose to bless the whole world with Jesus. That's the promise that was made. Amen. He says, and it's written, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. So what is this promise? God just come and he says, well, I decide that it shall not be by works. It shall not be by the law. Adam comes. Listen to this. God comes. He says, it shall be by my doing. Adam says, no, no, it will be by my doing. Then God comes, He brings the law system. He, he says to Abraham, I, I'm going to bless you. And that promise was made to Abraham and his seed. Not as of many, but as of one, Jesus Christ. This one seed is not counted by works, it says here, but by the, the children is counted by promise. Now what is the promise? He explains, this is the promise that God made. And then he uses an allegory explaining the promise. What is the promise? Man, it is like Jacob and Esau. The oldest one, which qualified according to the law, was supposed to be blessed by his doing, because he's the oldest one. But before he could do anything good, or anything bad, that you can know, it's not going to be by your doing. And this is the promise I make, that I will not deal with you according to your flesh. I will not deal with you according to your works. That's the promise of God. Now the children of God are the people that are born of the promise. In other words, those that receive their new life based on their belief in the promise, which is that God doesn't deal with you according to your works. Amen. 
Man, that is the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, we're going to end off with, um, how long have I preached? Do you know? 55 minutes. Man, that went quick. Let's go, let's end off with Galatians chapter, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Honoring physical Israel. Let's, let's look at that. Verse 15. Let's read from uh, verse 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, you sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For He is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in His flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments con uh, um, uh, contained in ordinances, uh, for to make in Himself of two to one new man, so making peace. Now please go and read this in the message, um, which will just explain this clearly to you. What it says there is, there's been, the Gentiles has been far from God. The Jews has been seen as close to God. Okay? Because they were given the oracles of God. Because that's the beneficial thing for the Jew. You can read that in Romans chapter 3. Um, ach, let, me, no, let me read it very quickly. Uh, Romans chapter 3 from verse 1. It says, What advantage then has the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much in every way. Chiefly because unto them were given, were committed the oracles of God. That's it. Then it says, For what if they do not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yes, let God be true in every man a liar. As is written, you, uh, so what he says is, listen, they, they were even given the oracles of God, they were given, they didn't even believe in God. Does that make that God cannot, that, that, that God's promise to people is not true? No, because the promise was made to the believer. Amen. So how can the unbeliever make the promise of God of no effect? Because the promise was not made to the unbeliever, it was made to the believer. Thank you, Jesus, for that. That's what it says. So, the Jews benefited by receiving. So, here was the Jews. The Jews was the, the people that benefited for they, for to them was the gospel preached first by receiving the prophetic utterances. Right. Now it says, But God has made you that were afar off, the Gentiles, and you brought them close. By doing what? By breaking the middle wall of separation. So, here's the law. I've got a piece of paper here with writing on this. Let's, let's say that's the law. The law brought division. It was called the enmity between people. It doesn't talk about enmity, enmity between us and God. It's enmity between two people groups. There was two types of people. The Jew and the Gentile. What brought forth the people of God, called like that, and the, and the Gentile was the law. What brought division? What, what caused division? What caused different people groups? What made Israel special? The law. Then God said, I take away the law and then make of the two one new man. So what needs to happen for you to say the Jew is different to the Gentile? You've got to bring in the, the, the law again. So the person that preaches this message, this is what I've got here. The Bible says, you're under the curse. For cursed is everyone that's under the law. For you to define a Jew, you have to use the law. If there's no law by which we can say, because by the law we would say these are the Jews and those are the Gentiles. It's not by grace by, by, which, the Jew, by, by which the Jewish people are defined. It was as a nation, as a physical nation, they were defined by the law. The true Israel of God is defined by grace. Even in Genesis chapter 12 and onwards, the promise was made to Abraham and his seed. And then the seed would be called the children of God or the true Israel of God. And they are the remnant, the people that shall be saved for they've believed in Jesus. But in the meantime, there was a law given called the, the ministration of death. By that was a certain people group defined as the Jewish nation. That we see as Jews was actually called Israelites. Physical Israel. Paul calls them under the curse. He says they are unsaved. I wish they can be saved. But they cannot be saved. For they want to have their own righteousness. That's the whole thing. Amen. Thank you. Jesus, he, he, the gospel was first preached to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For who did Jesus come? He came for the Jew. Now there's a teacher that says he will still come for the Jew. That's just a lie. 
take the Bible, burn the thing, if you believe that. Because that's not what's written there. Write your own new book and call that whatever you want. But don't use the Bible for that teaching, my friend. That's it. So here he comes, he says there's two people groups. The one's a Jew, the other one's a Gentile. The law is what brings the division. So for you to come in today with a doctrine, you've got to come with a dung message called by Paul, a dung, a message of dung, worthless, counted by the Apostle Paul as loss, and preach that to bring a division between Jew and Gentile. And then, what the cursed doctrine is it, to tell the Gentile to speak well of the Jew. So in other words, what you're actually saying is, under this curse, embrace this law message. Speak well of the Jew. Don't speak well of Abraham anymore, for Abraham was righteous by faith. No, no, no. He's going to be righteous by his flesh. So speak well of him. No, no. When you speak well of the Jew as a nation, my friend, you are cursing uh, Abraham. And the Bible says, if you speak bad of Abraham, bad of faith righteousness, where you're not defined by your flesh, where you're not defined by a nation, but defined by Jesus Christ and Him the only one, you're under the curse and, the, and, and God will call you cursed. My goodness. Church. You know, it's, it's, it's like, how can we fall into such a deep, deep, deep deception? Where the Apostle Paul wrote these things. I mean, there's so many verses that we can still go in here. I declare that you can be delivered today from this uh, 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 teaching of error where people are taught, where, where it's being taught that, that, that if you bless Israel. I, listen, I don't care. And, and I don't mind how big somebody's ministry is. How many people he has in his church. Or anything like that. And say, Israel is a special people before God. That just doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. The authenticity of the gospel is not found in the foreskin of a man. It's not found in an ethnic group. God is not interested in any ethnic group. He's interested in the individual. Hallelujah. He didn't die for a nation. He died for individuals. He calls you by name. Not by nation, by name. Amen. Hallelujah. So when we read of Israel, we read the Old Testament things, where Paul says, these things has been written for our admonition. Whose admonition? That of the church. So when it talks about Israel in the Old Testament, it's not a replacement theory. We're replacing nothing. We're just using the scripture for our own admonition. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen. Well, I'm going to end off with that. We're going to continue next week. Please, um, if you've got verses that you don't understand, I know I have many verses I haven't touched on, please send the verses, send the Old Testament prophecies, send those things that I can uh, use that and explain that to you because there might be certain things that, that you've got questions about. So please send that. We're still going to do Romans 10 and uh, Romans uh, 11 in the next two Sundays, but there are many other verses that you're going to have questions about, and Ezekiel, and all those promises made, please send them that I can uh, answer, you, answer those questions for you. Thank you so much for watching. What an honor, what a blessing. This message will be available tomorrow on the website, so make sure you send it to your friends that struggles with this whole Israel thing. My, my friend, you don't ever have to have any Jewish feast. You don't ever have to have a bar mitzvah. You don't ever have to burn candles, go to Israel to be blessed or anything like that. That is just not the truth. Be set free, my friend. Be set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much that you've watched. Let me just pray for you. Father, I want to thank you that I can pray for people right now. I thank you that their minds are enlightened with the gospel of your grace. And they can be blessed by what you've done for us in Christ. Amen. Thank you so much and God bless you.